Hello everybody, my name is Bogumil Aleksandrov. Uh, first we will play our ex explainer video and uh, they will continue with the presentation. Cargo Coin is a revolutionary platform that meets the huge logistics and trade markets worldwide with blockchain. For the first time in the world, there is a unified transportation platform that unites all modes of transport, such as maritime shipping, inland and railroad transport, air and drone cargo, and the future space cargo industries. Transport and supply chains are the perfect fit for blockchain technology, as it allows to minimize the delays in shipments, reduces the fraud, and increases the trust and security of transactions, provides instantaneous escrow payments, as well as smart contracts to replace the old-fashioned paper documents, such as bill of lading, CMR, airway bill, letter of credit, insurance certificate, custom declaration, etc. International trade accounts to $20 trillion each year, and Cargo Coin will allow for that trading to become more efficient by significantly reducing the expenses and opportunity costs. Cargo Coin facilitates the whole supply chain process from the marketplace listing and matching, through request for offer, negotiating terms and conditions, invoicing, title of ownership documents, delivery notes, insurance certificates, cargo space and routing optimization, port services, manning services, customs clearance process, warehousing, all the way to the tracking and final delivery of the cargo. CRGO is an ERC-223 token that is backwards compatible with ERC-20. Cargo coin tokens will be used for payment of all services as well as cargo on the United platform, creating a huge demand for tokens. The demand for cargo coin tokens will be steadily increasing as the usage of smart contracts and smart payments replace outdated paper documents and bank transfers in the future. The cargo coin hedging option will allow for stable and predictable cargo and freight costs in the delivery process, while at the same time avoiding currency fluctuations. Participate in the future revolution of logistics and international trade today. Cargo coin. Blockchaining logistics. So going back to what uh, Jay said in his introductory, uh, blockchain is at its, its infancy right now, and uh, the logistics market is much worse than that. Um, the recent innovation in the, in the transport and logistics, especially in the shipping industry, uh, in the last few years, been, people been using emails, and that's like really something that they speed up their process. Uh, with Cargo Coin, we are going to take the whole industry to another level and we are going to do that in several stages. The first stage that we are going to do is the shipping platform uh, because most of the transport being done in the, around the world is being done by shipping. In Dubai we have one of the biggest ports in the world, uh, for example, and uh, about 90% of the cargo actually is being transported by sea. Uh, even though people think of cargo as containers or trucks, this is not actually the reality. Uh, so the problems that Cargo Coin is going to address, first of all, is the are the delays. The delays are very expensive for the transport industry because vehicles are very expensive. The cargo is very expensive. Uh, due to the delays, the industry is suffering huge losses each year. For example, a ship staying in a harbor can cost as little as ten thousand dollars a day and can go up to like fifty or hundred thousand dollars per day. In crew charges, port charges, and all that. Uh, the lack of trust is a big problem with the transportation industry because people that do, they do not know each other uh, and they live across the world like somebody from, the, from Dubai doing business with somebody from Brazil, for example. They've never met each other. They've never done business before. They don't have mutual contacts. So how do, I, how do they trust each other to transport a cargo that costs 10 million or 50 million dollars. Uh, so with the blockchain, uh, that's quite easily solvable uh, because you have everything on the blockchain, the payments is escrowed, so you know that the, your payment is guaranteed while the other party knows that their payment is protected until the cargo is delivered. Uh, of course, the high cost, that's pretty much every project uh, on the blockchain or on the internet is trying to do. They're trying to reduce cost by uh, doing everything electronic. In our case, we are replacing the paper documents that are being used at the moment, especially bill of lading, letter of credit, 
the CMR in the inland transportation, we're going to replace this with smart contracts. And of course, uh, that will be much more easy to handle, much more dy dynamic, and it's much easier to prone to fraud. Uh, because with um, paper documents, with today's technologies, it's very easy to forge them. Uh, the problem with uh, information being insecure at the moment, imagine you have a big deal that goes through the bank, and all the bank employees, they look at your documents, at your papers, they review them. The insurance company does the same. You have a lot of people that are looking at your contracts and your invoices. They know everything about your business. <clears throat> That's not uh, very secure, really. Uh, regarding fraud, there is a, there's been a survey. The last one that we found was from 2014. And it's been estimated that about 34%, uh, there's been a 34% increase in the fraud in the logistics and the transport industry. And it's going up each year. Most of it is due to the, all these paper documents that are actually holding the title of ownership of the cargo. Uh, and of course, we have uh, opportunity costs, uh, which I already said in the very beginning, uh, where we have cargo or ships idling at some somewhere doing nothing uh, we've we've been checking on some surveys being done about 20 percent of the lifespan of each ship in the sea is just spent idling waiting for something to happen and a brand new ship like a medium size can easily cost over a hundred million dollars so we have 20 percent of that lost just waiting for something not, not doing their business really so what we're going to do we are going to first minimize the delays increase the trust, lower the costs, secure the information, reduce the fraud, and of course provide safe archiving, which is much easier with blockchain technologies. The platform that we're developing, uh, we'll be developing a free platform, which is something new. Uh, everybody up until now has been offering paid services monthly or annual payments. We're going to offer a free platform. We're going to charge transactions costs, of course. Uh, we'll be charging uh, supplemental service providers for providing their services on our platform, but the main uh, service will be actually free to the users in the platform. Uh, as I said previously, we'll be developing the platform in several stages, which we'll come back, we'll, we'll come to that uh, later in the presentation. Uh, these are screenshots from our beta version or MVP that we're developing right now. We are going to probably have that ready in a few weeks' time uh, to better test it with our partners and launch it by the end of the year for the public. Uh, regarding the hedging option that you saw in the video, uh, because the, probably one of the big problems with cryptocurrencies is, uh, is the, a huge volatility, even though in the recent months uh, the price has been quite stable. Still, there is a problem with volatility. Uh, and that's, uh, that could be, and it is still a big problem in the, in the real world where we have deals that uh, can, their lifespan can be, for example, a month. Uh, and of course, the parties cannot afford to have their, uh, the price of their cargo fluctuate like by 20% for one month. Uh, that's why we'll be having the hedging option if um, parties agree and they want to implement that as part of their smart contract, we'll provide a hedging option against, uh, for example, the USDT or another currency that is um, um, a fixed currency, cryptocurrency, what they call today the stable currencies. So they'll be able to use that to fix their price for the duration of the contract and change back to our tokens at the end of the contract to avoid any fluctuations. Uh, the market, the shipping market, it's actually impossible to probably evaluate the size of the whole industry. We've been finding various data. The lowest that we found was like $12 trillion per year, up to $30 trillion per year, but that's only accounting for exports and imports. Uh, the actual market is probably double that size because the imports and the exports, they don't take into account um, inter-trade in, inside the European Union, inter-trade inside the United States, inter-trade inside China or any other country. So 
the market that we're talking about is is really huge and nobody really knows what it is but it's probably the international trade is probably the biggest market in the world um, the business model like I said before uh, will not be charging uh, money for people to, use, to register on our platform and to use it uh, instead we'll be generating income from transaction fees uh, income from insurance uh, issuing insurance certificates uh, income from escrow payment processing by replacing the letters of credit income from service providers <coughs> such as service providers uh, could be customs clearance agencies, warehouses, representative agents, cargo surveyors, technical inspector and so on uh, we'll be having a section for many services or Job, ser job services for ships or any other vehicles. Uh, of course, we'll be having the usual income from marketing uh, activities like uh, newsletter, sponsorship, uh, banners, and etc. Uh, this is some more information about our token, token Monix. Uh, so the total supply is 100 million tokens. 65% of that is available for sale. The minimum contribution is $100, and we have bonuses for up to 20%. Actually, we, we do have some special bonuses that we can offer to this forum only. Um, our ICO ends on the 31st of December. We've already reached the soft cap, as you saw from the first slide. <coughs> this is our contract address. It's on um, the brochures as well, so we can check the investments and all that. Uh, and our maximum that we're looking to gain is $55 million. <coughs> Why so much? We get that question from time to time. 50% uh, of that will go to marketing and sales. What do we mean by marketing and sales? Uh, it's um, one of the problems with such a platform that, we've, uh, that we're going to encounter uh, is the adaptability. People in this industry, they they are not very easy to use to start using new technologies. They are very conservative. So in order to get to those people to use a new platform, a new way that they are going to work, we'll need to go to a lot of exhibitions that are not blockchain exhibitions, but exhibitions for cargo, for logistics of the different uh, types of uh, sectors, the maritime shipping, the inland transportation, and the air cargo. So. We'll need to go around the world quite a lot, presenting our project and presenting on stage like that to people that are, sorry, in that industry, uh, so that they can see the real benefits, they can try the platform and start using it. Uh, so that's why we've put so much on advertising and marketing. And of course, we'll be doing traditional advertising like publishing articles mainly on uh, specialized websites or magazines. Uh, we'll be reaching out through forums, through workshops that we're going to organize. Uh, of course, normal email marketing and all these techniques will be involved as well. 30% uh, of the funds that we raise are going to research and development of the platform because we, our platform is going to get developed in five years. So we're not um, doing our platform overnight. We want to do it really properly and we want to do it step by step. Uh, of course, we have 10% administrative costs, 7% for exchange listings, which are quite expensive, and 3% on legal expenses. So these are the stages that we're looking at our platform. Uh, first, we start uh, with the smart contracts and the ICO. Currently, we're in development stage one. Uh, that's until the end of uh, 2018. Next year, we're doing the blockchain integration and then we're going to have uh, the finished the global shipping platform. The next stage, we're starting the inland transportation platform at the end of 2019, and we're launching that in the beginning of 2020. And then the next stage in 2021, we're doing the air cargo platform, and after that we're integrating all these three, uh, these, those three platforms, we're integrating them into a single unified platform. Uh, such a platform does not exist in the world today, including blockchain or excluding blockchain, a platform for all types of transport seems doesn't exist. Nobody has done that. There are platforms for the different types of transport, but they're separate. None of them are connected together. 
Uh, these are the exchanges that we already have agreements with. There are a few more exchanges that we haven't listed here because uh, we had the agreements quite, quite recently with them. OEX is the biggest one. Their daily trading volume is about 130, 150 million dollars per day. Uh, Bancor is pretty famous. They were the most successful ICO of 2017. I think they raised um, something like 200 million dollars last year. Uh, Nautilus is a, is a new exchange that is just launching in Australia. They are licensed exchange, so they can do crypto to fiat and fiat to crypto as well. Uh, the other exchanges are smaller ones, and my other wallet we integrated with that, which is the most famous one. We've also integrated with two other wallets. Uh, this is regarding our community, the number of uh, followers we have in the different social media some ratings of, uh, of our ICO on different websites. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about our partners uh, because we've done quite a lot of partnerships with uh, different companies from the logistics uh, sector and from uh, IT sector as well. Uh, first, I want to start with UGSA because it's a company based in Dubai. Uh, it's called United Global Shipping Agency and uh, their head office in, is in here in Dubai. Uh, we've already signed an agreement with them because they have representative offices in over 20 countries in Asia, in the Persian Gulf and in Asia as a whole. They also have an office in China and South Korea. Next year they're opening their office in, in uh, Europe. Uh, so they're a pretty big network of uh, shipping agencies that we signed an agreement with who are going to use our platform exclusively and uh, they will be the ones who will be mainly better testing it and of course using it to do their business. Uh, we secured uh, three different types of revenue models that we are going to do with them. I can't disclose the models because that's non-disclosable. Uh, but we've been uh, deciding on different revenue streams that we can do with them together. Uh, another platform that we've partnered with is GiveChain. <laughs> Pretty famous, they finished their ICO about a month ago. Uh, what they manufacture are cargo drones. I'm talking about drones that are the size of a car and can carry up to 400 kilograms of payload. Uh, so we've partnered with them, they have a blockchain company as well. We'll be integrating our smart contract with their smart contract. Uh, Road Launch, it's a Canadian company that uh, they have their platform for the last two or three years in Canada. It's about inland transportation trucking. So uh, they're doing right now their ICO, which is called Factor. Uh, it's also part of CEO Club, actually. And uh, we're integrating our smart contract with their smart contract in a similar way like uh, Skiff Chain. Deliver, uh, it's last mile delivery solution which we're going to integrate with because our platform is pure business to business and we want to integrate with a solution provider that does the business to customer part. Uh, the next line, actually the next two lines are the different partners that we have in the shipping industry, the IT industry as well. And uh, the ones we have here, on the Fox Business and Ion Television and Bloomberg, uh, we, we signed a contract uh, about two months ago with a TV show called New to the Street and Exploring the Block. They uh, air on the Fox Business Channel, on Lion Television and Bloomberg, and the total of the three televisions is 300 million people audience. Uh, we already did uh, the first uh, episode for Cargo Coin, which is going to be shown on TV in about one week or 10 days time. And we signed a contract with them for uh, one year for 12 episodes get the cargo coin featured in 12 episodes on their show. So, uh, I mean, from the trader's point of view, that's pretty good because it will create a lot of hype for the project in the next 12 months for sure. Uh, here we have calculated three scenarios about the price of uh, cargo coin tokens. So, the, I'll start with the worst one. I like, I like to start with the worst and get to the better. Uh, the very pessimistic scenario of having just 0.1 market share and just 0.1 transaction fee with a pretty pessimistic uh, size of the market at $15 trillion, 
multiplied by 0 0.1 is 1.5 billion market share. And with the limited uh, tokens supply that we have of 100 billion tokens, that makes the price of about $15. And we're starting at one now. So even in the worst case scenario, when people need tokens to trade on the platform, to transport cargo, to pay for services, the worst case scenario will be $15. And uh, the optimistic scenario is not really optimistic because we are talking about 5% market share, which is really not so much, considering there is really no, not much competition. So uh, here we have $7,500 for a token. That's the optimistic scenario. It could, be, it could get much better than that, I think. Uh, this is our team, the core team, of course. There are other people like community managers and uh, moderators, <coughs> which we haven't included here on the team. The team is uh, composed of two people, uh, two types of people. Uh, first are the transportation and logistics specialists. The other CEO, Martin. Uh, he's a ship owner himself and he has a logistics company for over 20 years now. He's been in this sector all his life. His father had a logistics company. So that's what he's been doing all his life. Uh, Captain Ilkay, uh, he lives in London. He, he used to be a captain of a ship. Now he has a logistics company. Uh, and he's more specialist in the containers business. Uh, Christina, she's been working for very large companies around the world. Uh, she has a master's degree from Man City University, London. Uh, I don't remember which company she worked with, but they're on the website, they're pretty big. Uh, George Zelazko, he's an inland transportation specialist and he works at the European Parliament as a local transportation advisor. Uh, we have some other transportation specialists for part of our advisory team. The, the other part of the team are the develop, is the development team. I'm heading the development team as I've been developer for over 20 years, even though my, my degree is in uh, international trade and finance, but I've developed all my life. Uh, so we have uh, a few developers, graphic designers, uh, user interface designers. I'm not going to go into much detail because it's all available on the website. Uh, these are our, our advisors. Uh, the most famous one is probably you know Simon Gokin. He's been uh, an advisor, a top advisor on ICO Bench for maybe a year now. Uh, Anthony Bonsart, who is the vice president of Goldman Sachs, and JP Morgan. Uh, we have Jonathan Chang, who is the CEO of Nautilus Exchange, which I previously talked about. We have Dr. Clemens Bechter, who is a uh, Professor at the Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand. He's from Germany originally. Uh, not going to go through many details because our time is running out. Uh, so, uh, if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Justin. Correct me if I'm wrong, you're raising something like $50 million? Into 55. 55. Out of that, half of that, 50% goes for marketing and sales, right? Yes, that's correct. That's around $25 million. Yes. So you say you're going to use $25 million in road, in road shows, and trade shows, something like that? Not just that. I mean, marketing generates uh, not just road shows and trade shows, but of course a lot of that. That's a hell of a lot of money to go to well, trade shows. Yeah. Would you I agree? Mean, going uh, with a few people to a uh, real exhibition, like a big one, just a standalone can easily cost $20,000, $30,000. And bringing, for example, five people with the stands to Japan, for example, it's pretty costly. Do you have a performance financial statement? How are you going to use the money? Yeah, we have uh, done some financial analysis. Uh, no, 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 that's what I'm going to ask How are you going to use the $25 million exactly? It's a lot of money for trade shows. Yes, exa exactly. What do you mean, like a detailed description yeah, of Yeah, exactly. Well, I can't give that description for the next five years because we don't know what shows will be in the next five years. Fine, that's my first question. The second question is, there is a large platform just created by IBM and Merck. Yes, that's just for companies. How do you compete with that? Uh, we don't compete with that, actually. They're just, uh, their platform is just for containers, first of all. So it's just uh, addressing the niche market. Uh, secondly, uh, 
the market is composed mainly of small companies, small big companies. So the IBM solution is an enterprise solution that doesn't apply to most of the companies. It applies to companies like Maersk, because they're a huge company, they're one of the biggest companies in the world. They can use IBM solutions. Other companies, 90% of the other companies, they cannot afford IBM solutions. They don't have the capacity, they don't have technical uh, support, technical uh, technical capabilities, anything to use IBM's platform. IBM platform is an enterprise solution, we're not competing with them. Uh, and they're just doing the containers market really, where first we're starting with the dry bulk cargo, and we're not doing containers until later, because the containers market is very limited for penetration right now. Mars is holding 80% like of that market, and it's uh, not viable to try and uh, take out somebody so big. Uh, hi, uh, this is Adelazis from Kusot uh, Kern from Saudi Riyadh. Uh, my question here is: uh, um, You haven't given us any uh, anything about the competition uh, landscape. We would like to know that, and would like to know how you do position yourself among the others. You you uh, value position clearly among the others. Uh, I can. They, I mean, I don't like talking about our competitors, that's why we're not putting those slides. I can tell you briefly, uh, the companies that we're competing with, uh, the oldest one is called STEM in Order, the website STEM in Order. It has been maybe last updated 10, 15 years ago, so it's basically running on autopilot. But people are using it, they have about 80,000 registered users. Even though it's a very old platform and it's really hard to use, it's slow, etc. Uh, a new competitor that uh, emerged last year, about a year ago, it's Shipnext. They're a company based in Ukraine. Uh, their platform is not bad, it's not finished, and it hasn't been upgraded for one year so far. Uh, the problem with their platform is that they're owned by a very large owner company called Varmar and they don't have very good reputation in the shipping industry. So um, a lot of people avoid to use their platform even though it's the only one which is modern. Of course they don't have blockchain, now they are planning to implement blockchain technologies in the future, but they don't have that yet and their platform is halfway there. Uh, on the ICO side, there are two platforms that, that are competing with our platform we're um, talking about the shipping side only. Uh, that's CargoX, which launched uh, their ICO last year, but they're again focused on containers only, and they're focused on optimizing the free space in the container ships, really. So we're talking about a niche within a niche market. It's a very small market they're addressing. Another company that uh, has been launched this year, it's called Bitnotic. We are partnering with them, actually. They launched their MVP maybe about a month ago. It's about containers again. So they're doing containers, they want to buy ships. So the way they're going, it's a different way. We, we don't want to have ships, we don't want to be brokers. We want to stay independent and we want everybody to come to our platform. But to do that, we need to be independent. We, don't, we cannot uh, do brokerage ourselves. We cannot be brokers, we cannot be uh, agents, or we cannot be ship owners. Way. We have to stay independent, otherwise people will not trust us because obviously we'll be trying to steal their business this way. Uh, uh, hi, uh, I'm Varshita from Getaway Group. Uh, my question to you is, if you plan to go digital on the documentation, uh, how would you deal with the uh, custom clearance regulations of different countries? Who will normally ask for physical copies of documents? Yeah, uh, regarding customs declarations, Currently, the World Customs uh, Organizations, we've been discussing it with them. They're looking at the possibility of using blockchains for customs de declarations worldwide. Uh, South Korea already has a pilot project for their customs clearance process to go through blockchain. That's already in progress. Uh, Canada is also looking into the same uh, thing. So uh, I think that over the next few years, there will be already customs uh, that will be using uh, blockchain. In the meantime, of course, people will still need to print the custom declaration and bring it with them. 
but it will still be stored as part of the smart contract and it will be there just uh, until the custom start to accept widely blockchain version. They will have to bring, of course, the paper document with them, but it still, it still will have a QR code that can be checked online with the smart contract. Uh, and uh, is there any way that uh, you can deal with uh, certificate of origins or Euro ones which are requested in uh, most of the countries and you need it from the embassy? Normal delays in documentation comes from such documents which are issued from embassies. Is uh, there any uh, thought on that or you have a plan to deal with this? Well, the certificate of origin and the free sale certificates, I guess you're referring to those as well, uh, not really part of our platform. But our platform will be flexible enough and uh, uh, different shipments, they need specific documents that will be allowed by the platform to include different specific documents. So you have the basic set that every project normally carries. Of course, if the, for example, let's say, I mean, uh, if you want to transport weapons, you have special certificates and special requests there and uh, special permissions. Of course, that will be included as part of the deal because it's a specific uh, cargo shipment or if you're shipping food, you need uh, health inspectorate certificates different of, uh, let's say, if you're transporting coal. So that will be included on the platform, but we will not be dealing, because this is really a uh, certificate that are issued by manufacturers, they're supposed to have those, those certificates prior to the shipment, otherwise they cannot ship it out. So uh, they'll be included as part of the smart contract, but they're not part of the issuing process. I mean, we could integrate with that in the future, but it's not part of our platform. But your team will uh, try to facilitate it? Yes, I mean, all documents that are relevant to a shipment will be included in the smart contract, because they're needed to complete the shipment, of course. <coughs> Uh, just, but this is a very interesting idea because you've identified a very uh, uh, interesting space where actually nobody's working. And uh, as the lady asked, there are a lot of, uh, I mean that was one of my questions uh, because uh, these documents are very much necessary and uh, it is not possible to keep half of the things on the platform and the rest of the half, uh, you know, say on a separate note. Uh, I hope that you uh, understand that challenge. A second challenge I see uh, which I want you to address is uh, but, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is that the LCs and all the uh, payments uh, will be converted and through the platform, correct? Yes. Okay. So, uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, 60% of the trade, the world trade, I'm uh, sorry, 60% of the trade, international trade which happens from US is on credits, right? And uh, as if you go overseas internationally, I think it's more than 85%. So the reason that not the importers and exporters and different traders use banks and LCs is to get trade facilities against those LCs. Otherwise, they have an option of actually going to exchange and sending the money directly as well, right? So the two reasons, one is trust and the second reason is that they will go to the banks and get these LCs so they can go and discount or get trade facilities or go get into different trade financing uh, transactions, right? So that is the reason. How do you, uh, is anybody from the platform uh, giving credit or something, or what exactly? How, how are you handling that portion? Uh, the letter of credit is not a credit. Uh, it's um, you have to have the money at the bank, or the bank has to trust you that you have those money. But the letter of credit is not a credit, really. Uh, so the letter of credit is really an escrow payment where the bank guarantees that the, the party that is receiving the cargo is going to pay for it. I'm sorry, uh, I'll just correct you. Letter of credit is just an instrument, okay? And which can be monetized by the importer, okay? So That's I'm not saying it's a credit, I'm saying that this instrument is utilized by the importers to actually go and get the financing from the banks. There are different letter of credit, there's users, there's, there's a site, there's so many. So I'm just trying to understand, if you are referring to only that escrow payment, which is side LC, just a very small amount, which is between 40 or maybe 30 or maybe 15 percent of the whole trade of, that you are referring to. Uh, actually, yeah, the letter of credit is probably about 50 percent of the trade. A lot of trade is being done by direct payments as well. Uh, regarding loan payments, we are partnering with Depository Network, which is an ICO that uh, you can deposit cryptocurrency or other assets, actually any asset to 
their platform and they can lend money against that. So we are partnering with them. Uh, they will be launching uh, very soon their current home testnet. So they will be launching very soon and we will be providing this service through our platform. But we are more, will be focused on the escrow payment really. Because it's, um, with the loans it can get really complicated and it's a very different business. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. And